Ecco. Hello, my name is Chris and I'm a customer engineer here at Graphcore. In this video, I'm going to demo our PyTorch API for the IPU, which we call PopTorch. PopTorch is a Python package for PyTorch programs to execute seamlessly on IPU systems. IPUs are directly accessible from within PyTorch code, so you can take full advantage of IPU hardware acceleration with just a few extra lines of code. To demonstrate this, I'm going to walk through a basic Fashion MNIST based example for both training and inference. The tutorial and the code example are publicly available on GraphCore's GitHub. So in the tutorial, we have a small CNN model, which we're going to train on the Fashion MNIST dataset. Let's start by looking at the PyTorch implementation for training this model on the CPU, and then I'll run through the lines of code that we need to change to make this compile and run on an IPU. So at the top here, we load in our data set and we define some data transformations to prepare the data. Then we define the model and forward pass itself as a PyTorch module. Here, we pass the data set into a PyTorch data loader and we define the loss criterion and the optimizer. Then, for each epoch, we loop through the batches of the training data, we zero the gradients, compute the forward pass, calculate the loss, accumulate the loss, run the backward pass, and finally, compute an optimizer step. To make this run on an IPU, under the hood, a couple of main things need to happen. Firstly, we need to acquire an available IPU device with the appropriate number of IPUs. And this part here that performs the computation needs to be compiled into a static computational graph so that it could be loaded onto the device to be executed. As well as this, data streams to and from the device will need to be configured. PopTorch does all of this for us with just a few modifications to the code. Let's run through those now. Import the PopTorch package, and then we want to move the loss into the forward pass of the model and only apply it if we're in training mode. Make sure that the labels are optionally passed in as an argument to the forward pass. Then we need to create the PopTorch options, which allow us to configure various things about how we compile and execute our model. These are all documented in the PopTorch user guide. We'll just use the defaults for now. We swap out the PyTorch data loader for the PopTorch data loader, passing in our PopTorch options as an additional argument. Then we simply wrap our model in the PopTorch training model, passing in our PopTorch options and the optimizer. By calling the training model wrapper, PopTorch will automatically acquire a device with the number of IPUs we need based on how we've configured the model. In this case, we have not set up any pipelining or replications, so we just need a device with a single IPU. PopTorch then lowers the forward and backward pass of the PyTorch model down through our software stack, adding in the operations needed to perform the optimizer step. It does this through PopArt, our popular advanced runtime library, which serves as an abstraction layer for integrating high-level ML frameworks. The whole graph is then compiled to run on the device. So now we've extracted the loss and the optimizer step into the compiled model, we can remove those and just pass in the input data and labels to the wrapped model and the outputs and loss are returned. And that's it. The training loop will now be executing on an IPU. We've looked at the training loop, but what about inference? So in the tutorial, we also have an evaluation loop. Let's look at what we need to do to make this run on the IPU as well. So for inference, we need to wrap the model in the PopTorch inference model, passing in just the PopTorch options this time. This does the same thing as the training wrapper, but just creates a compiled graph for the forward pass. Then we change the data loader to the PopTorch data loader and swap the model out for the wrapped inference version. So that was a quick introduction to our PyTorch support for the IPU. We demonstrated how to take an existing PyTorch model, wrap it in a PopTorch inference or training model wrapper, and I explained a little bit about what's going on inside PopTorch when we do this. We then showed how to modify a training or evaluation loop to execute our model on an IPU. PopTorch has been designed specifically for PyTorch users to be able to leverage the full advantage of IPU hardware acceleration with as few as possible code alterations. 
I hope you find this tutorial useful. As I mentioned, you can find the full code example and tutorial on our GitHub. For more developer resources and comprehensive user guides, please visit our developer portal. Thank <laughs> you.